And we are busy. I am Baron J67. I'm T Jones, and this is episode 29 of, of the, the Adventures, Adventures of the Black Nerds. Of the Black Nerds. The Black Nerds. We're getting the it in, man. Nerds. Hey. Well, we are actually going to start off from last week uh, Luke because Cage. Luke Cage. Last week we were supposed to talk about Luke Cage, but that didn't happen because uh, we went off on a t- major tangent, which we never do. We never stay on track. Yeah, um, we really don't. Yeah, so if uh, anybody's ever ever looking for us to stay on track, it won't happen. It yeah, just can't it, happen. It, it's so. It, I feel like the moment we start doing that, it gets real robotic and stiff, and then our transitions are trash. Yeah, because when we first started this, we would we would actually do pre production, oh, yeah, yep. <laughs> pre setups and stuff, and. And uh, this is why this is why we we do need a third person. We need a third person to run the computer board. We really but do. This would be even better in person. Like if we were at a, like a studio or like if we if I was still shooting at your place, still recording yep. at your your spot, this would be way better for that because that person will be able to bring up everything that we're talking about. And we'd be able to get them seamless transitions. And then to add the add that like random third voice. But look at us already off topic. We're <laughs> sounds like we're getting ready to do an interview. Oh uh, yeah, but, you know, that's how I go. That's how I go. <laughs> right? But so talking about Luke Cage. Now I thought this season was epic. I thought it was the right amount of cheesy. Um because first off, I know I I know it's going to be cheesy. It's a comic book show. Mm-hmm. Comic books at their core are very cheesy. Yeah. You know, if you go back to the Silver Age and Golden Age of comic or Silver Age of comics. Yeah. Pim, boom, pow. Gee Willikers. Like, it, it, it's corny. <laughs> it, it's super corny. <laughs> but at one point, but at one point, that was like the, that was like, you see how we have lit today? That was their lit. That was their, the G back Willikers. then, yeah, G Willikers was like the, like that not, was cool. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> yeah, one would. One can. Hurt. I wasn't born back in the 60s yeah. and the 50s, so the I 50s, wouldn't 40s. be able to. Look, I, I just all I know is G Willikers sounds like a way to say, "God damn it!" Or holy shit. That's uh, that just, is exactly what it's. What, it, what all it is is a fancy way to cuss. And <laughs> if you're gonna do it, I'm all for it. Get just get it out. <laughs> just just get, get it on out of there. Your blood pressure. Mm-hmm. I couldn't imagine sitting there all day. No, what you should try to try to imagine your oh, grandmother shaky. saying that. I think See? my grandma will cuss like crazy. Heck yeah, first. my grandmother ain't saying G Willikers. G Willikers. I only know one. I only know one like elder, like grandmother figure in my life that said, "Gosh darn it." <laughs> Everybody else was straight to the point, like we're saying. Okay, off topic again. Back, on, topic back on track. Again. Back on track. Back on track. So, Luke Cage. It was the right amount of cheesy. Mm-hmm. It was action packed in a good way. And they were not Jamaicans. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, and I, I just felt it was good. Now. Mm. I thought, spoiler alert, I thought the ending was so ridiculous. We can't jump straight to the ending, dog. Well, what do you want to talk about? Because I, I got I got so much to talk about. Oh, First of all, uh, curious. Bushmaster made <laughs> Bushmaster made uh, people who come from country in Jamaica, a.k.a. the Bush, he made them all look and sound legit. And uh, I, I, I actually embrace that part of me now. I, uh, I am what Bushmaster is, so <laughs> I embrace the Bush. Um, him on it, top of the hill. Yeah, it, it, you know, it was so dope to have a villain like him. You he know, I dope. think I think he was dope because he wasn't bad. We always talk about these villains that play both sides. You just have to understand it from his perspective. And I get it. I mean, it in in this episode, the bad guy or in this series, the bad guy was uh um Stokes. Stokes. Yeah. What's her <laughs> what was her first name? I forget her first Mariah name. Mariah Stokes. Mariah Stokes. She was the bad guy. Uh, I mean, she she 
she was trying to get out of the game and keep it legit, but at some point, everything just turned. But be, even before that, like before, and it, and to be honest, it wasn't even really her; it was her family. And she it just was, fell into that exactly fell into the family business exactly. So, but see, funny thing about it is, she wasn't even in the family business. True. She wasn't trying to be. She remember she was trying to listen. I inherited this shit that my cousin had. I was trying to get rid of this. And then Well, she didn't inherit it. She kind of took it. Well, she had she had to take it. She had nothing else. Yeah. yeah. She well, no, she killed him out of anger, though. Remember, it wasn't because she had to. But no, but then she could have walked away from that and tried to get her political power back from yeah. her working at it. But, but she, she would have lost all the money. She would have lost all the money, name, all that everything. shit. And she was so hell bent on her family name, which yeah. what she, the projects she was doing inside of Harlem were good projects. Uh, so we're not going to say she's completely evil. I thought that the the way she described like the hospital and the 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 the, the development side, the development, the housing development projects he had, I thought those ideas was good. So she wasn't completely evil. She knew what she was trying to do, and it was only because Harlem was home for her. So like her character wasn't. She was willing to die for her beliefs. Which was sure. Harlem, which is cool, and sure. I I get it with her. The reason why they made her into the villain was because of what her family did, and then now she's fighting. She's fighting a battle on two fronts because now she got worried about the Jamaicans. Then she got worried about Luke Cage. Luke Cage coming after her. She, you know, she at some point she was gonna go crazy and say, you know what. I'm going to embrace all of this and we just going to make it happen. That's where the lunatic, <laughs> the whole yeah, lunatic she range she went on. No, she 100% snapped. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was pretty cool seeing her hit that point. I love I love when you show um, character growth on screen yeah. without it being a hard transition. When mm-hmm. it's a nice, I mean, without it being a jump cut. When, yeah. it's a, when it's a nice transition, you slowly see somebody getting peeled layer by layer. And they finally become who you wanted them to be. Yeah. And to be able to go back and watch the transition, her being against crime, her being okay with crime, mm-hmm. her being the crime boss. What What about her, Shades, though? Um, I think oh, at first I thought his character was so dry. His character was so, like, cheesy. no energy. He just had the same... He spoke the One-liner. same. Yeah, he, 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 he moved the same. But what happened? She she goes crazy. He goes crazy too. And this is when he when when he when they're actually doing the interview. This is towards the end of the season. He starts he starts really becoming a criminal or a convict, talking like a convict, laughing like a convict, and even no remorse to certain stuff. Didn't yeah, care when he started when he started snitching like crazy. Yeah. Why does he always snitch in everything he does? Even in I, Sons of Anarchy. In Sons of Anarchy, right? I said, he was, yo, he, he sure is. Good. He sure is giving it all up again. Yeah. <laughs> they know think, how to, yeah. he's going to uh-huh. be typecast as that type of character. As the guy who's a thug, which the, you know is going to be a snitch. Exactly, but. Like um, if you pop up in your hood show, you already know who to Oh, uh, he's snitching. He's, he's snitching. snitching. <laughs> but you um, know, I like, I, he's, he's not one dimensional either. Um, what do you he, mean? He was not one dimensional at all. He lo- he snapped when he killed his best friend. That's I, when he snapped. I think he because snapped. He started snitching. I, he started. I think he. I I would say he snapped when he uh, or when she killed all those Jamaicans in that restaurant. I I think that's when he gave up on the life of crime and caring about being a snitch. Yeah. But he started. Yeah, he was rattled though. He yeah. was super round. He was shaking. Mm-hmm. He, couldn't even, because he couldn't even do nothing. He yeah. couldn't even, remember he sh- he's the one that shot the survivor. Yeah. But hit her in the shoulder. Yep. He didn't, you know, he I, I think he was way off his way off at that point. Or no, you're right. I think the, the shooting of his best friend that messed kinda up, it, it cracked everything. Yeah. But the the killing, the, the the innocent killing for no apparent reason, which and remember that wasn't the plan. He yeah, had the plan, the plan at all. you know, but same different, same situation with two different Stokes. Same thing he told the Darnell. Darnell did the same thing. He goes crazy. And, you know, he I don't think I think he was really in love with her and just couldn't take it and was like, you know what? Yeah, F this. 
and you know what? That was a, actually a weird dynamic that I didn't, I didn't see fully playing out. Mm-hmm. They they did a a weird job of showing their relationship. Yeah, because you really couldn't tell, and I don't know if it was his uh, voice pattern or what, but it was hard for me to tell if he was really in love with her, or he was just there to get ahead. Yeah, I, all the way up until the end, I thought he was just there to um to get ahead to get ahead me too you're you're 100 100 agree with you yeah i thought i thought he was just working her over putting the moves on the old lady with the money Mm -hmm. you know getting getting whatever he can out of it and then at the end of it even when he was trying to get her to confess he was trying to save her yeah he did because he was like uh, when when he yeah Yeah. he was like come on let's go he was really trying to trying to take care of her i mean with with his character as all, like I said, when it when it first started, even when they were in jail, I mean, shit, even some 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 of the or even some parts in Sons of Anarchy, his character was just so weird to me, like weird and Off. and and dry. Like, and I'm not sure if that's just his gimmick or that's if that's and I'm pretty sure that's what they were going for because, you know, Everything we got it. Wrong. Yeah. But uh, either way, I think that. I think that everything it, I think everything that happened to uh Mariah mm-hmm. was it it literally showed like the it, it was like a roller coaster the whole episode cuz she was down then she was up and then she was down again and then she was up and then she skyrocketed down and then <laughs> skyrocketed way back up and then she went all the well, she you know, spoiler alert, major spoiler alert, she ended up dying. So, True. uh, that was that. She ended up being murdered by her daughter. Of course. Which, that was unexpected. Uh, uh I wasn't well, expecting that. I was expecting her, I was expecting it to be like the kingpin from uh, Daredevil. Be in prison. Be in prison, somehow get daughter. out, somehow do some shit, and you still yeah. run into shit. You know, when she, when she cut old girl neck in prison, I was like, damn, she kind of yeah, gold. She kind of gold. All stuff's about to be orange is the new black mm-hmm. next season. Uh, I was ready for that. Yeah. But to see to see her die that way, it actually added a dope transition for me because I thought it I thought it was dope the way they ended it with Luke Cage becoming the hub of Harlem. See now, and let me tell you, the reason why that's super dope. Is if you read House of M, shout out to Tone Deaf. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Tone. Tone Deaf Radio. Tone Deaf Radio. Actually, yeah, let's do that real quick. So, you guys, um, we're, we're jumping in the middle. You can hear us, and you're probably listening to us now on Tone Deaf mm-hmm. Radio. Um, but we are on Spotify. We are on iTunes. We are on iHeartRadio, YouTube, uh, and Spreaker, and just about anywhere else you can find your favorite podcast. So wherever you listen to podcasts, make sure to go and follow us there. Um, Tone Deaf Radio, we're under the big banner. The big yes, banner. sir. And always uh, stop by Spreaker. Uh, search for Tone Deaf, Tone Deaf Radio there. Stop by there first and uh, show some love, man. We really appreciate you, Tone. Oh, yeah. Shouts out to the fam. Mm-hmm. Now, now back to it. Um, but I loved the transition because it was... She did it perfect. She gave it to somebody who she knew was, she said it, somebody who's going to love Harlem. Yeah. And then she knew it was going to taint him. Mm -hmm. But, oh, like I was saying with the House of M, there you go. I was blanked out for a second. I almost jumped on a tangent. With the House of M storyline, there's a part where um, Luke Cage is running his part of uh, Hell's Kitchen or his part of the town. Yeah. And it's very similar. He's running his place like that's that's almost what he always ends up doing. And it's cool to see it actually playing out. Now, I think he's going to get corrupted. OK, now this is where I this is where I this this is where I didn't like that. I didn't like the ending. I didn't like the fact that he became the hub, especially Harlem Paradise. I would have been more excited if he would have turned it down, if he would have gave it to the daughter, because now we know who the next villain is, because. As you can see, running, uh, what's it called, Harlem's Paradise, and doing all of that, it's been that family to do it, and everybody in that family has been bad, has had some type of corruption about them. Let me not say bad. 
uh, because they all had the same goal as the family name and keeping Harlem what it is. So Mm -hmm. when I seen that they gave it to Luke Cage, I instantly thought how they could how the next season would probably play out. You know, he's torn between the life of fighting crime and running Harlem's paradise. And then he gets a little bit corrupted. Now the police are investigating him for some. And I was like, ah, man, I didn't really like that. I was more cool with the the humble barbershop Luke Cage because of that factor. Because you knew what you was getting with Luke Cage. With him taking over Harlem Paradise, he has a whole nother responsibility to take care of. A whole sure. nother thing to be. He's the boss of that place now. You know? So, well, yeah. no, you got to think out on a bigger scale. He's the boss of Harlem now. Or the, yeah, the boss of Harlem now. You know? How you going to be the boss of Harlem now and do all the shit you were doing on the side? Taking care of Harlem. Being the baby to Harlem. All this says is now somebody else can come through and you still got to, you got to take, you got to take care of your Harlem paradise. Is that going to be a problem with you taking care of the streets of Harlem? Is that going to be an issue with, you know, you, or, and then you did say him becoming a little bit corrupted. Who's there to take out of it unless he becomes corrupted fully and the defenders have to whoop his ass and bring him back down, you well, know, I which I, go ahead. No, I was like, which I don't really, you know, see all that, but I'm just speaking as obviously as what ifs. I just like I said, when I seen he was standing there at the top, he's at the top of Harlem. Remember, this is a guy that was nobody in Harlem and then he slowly became who he is today. True. Sure. But he, he was just so kind hearted for the greater good. You know, I and then matter of fact, I don't even think that was the first part. I think he would have really killed Bushmaster. If old yeah. girl didn't stop him. He would have really killed him. Oh, he was gonna kill him. He was, and that would have been it. For- well, this is this this is the get down when it comes to Luke Cage for me, um, and it comes to that ending. We, they had to do this to move it forward. What? How many more times do you need to see Luke Cage in the hoodie walking down the street? Hell, the Arrowverse. I'm jumping to DC. But hell, even Arrow became the head of the. Uh, he became the dragon, uh, the demon's head. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. spoiler alert. Sorry, folks. It's like five years late. But uh, but yeah, you know, you have to move the story along. So, in the name of progression, I see what they did. Yeah, because we they did. we know who's going to be the villain now. One because them, yeah. We know who one of them is going to be the villain now, yeah. but it just becomes mad predictable. Well, from my my perspective as well, because the way I'm looking at it is Harlem Paradise wasn't easy to run for for Mariah. It was easy to run for Darnell because he was Cornel. about that or Cornell, whatever. He was about that life. <clears throat> she wasn't about that life. Luke Cage ain't about that life. You know, I, think, I don't I think it's going to shock us. But, OK, let me say this. Season three is the first season I'm actually really excited for when it comes to Luke Cage. Because mm-hmm. yeah, I was always I, on the fence about it. I'm, You know what? I, I was never on the fence about the first season. I was on the fence about the second season. I didn't know what they were actually going to do. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> I, I didn't know what they were actually going to do. And then third season, I got a question. I got a big question mark because I, I want to be wrong. Okay. I want to be wrong. The reason why I want to be wrong is we just had this conversation, I think, an episode ago about how things become are becoming predictable, especially in movies and, and, and well, the conversation was about reviews, but things are becoming predictable and that the ending right there, I'm able to predict one villain and I'm, I'm able to predict some type of eternal conflict within Luke Cage possibly happening now if i'm wrong i'm wrong which i want to be because i want to be shocked which speaking of being shocked i just watched dinner thief for the first time and that movie blew my mind okay <laughs> time out time out now we gotta fight you just said that luke cage was predictable yeah but then no 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 that's not what i said i said luke cage season three possibly being predictable oh okay but dinner thieves was not predictable it wasn't to you? No, it was not. How you could you have predicted that? Because at the end, they didn't 
you they show you everything at the end how everything worked out let me tell you exactly why cuz ice cube's son wasn't going to be no chump in a major movie he was in see see there's no Once reason you, there's no reason for you to show to know that without the you seeing the ending though now if i would have watched that movie not knowing who ice cube's son was that's bull- then nah, i would agree uh, oh, I disagree no, bro, with that. It's just common sense. No, look, look no. you want to talk about predictability. No, do you know why? How, you, you, you know you why I know who the killer is. Let <laughs> me tell you. Let me tell you something. Huh. Hear me out. Let me tell you how I know who the killer is in every episode of every sitcom before it even show who the killer is, because it's always the most per- decorated random actor who pops up on the show. For yeah, the but first O'Shea time. ain't no thug. But oh shit, ain't no, ain't no dork either. And 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 he wasn't even the main character in the movie. But let me tell, you, he was the main. He was the lich key. He was the only one that connected. Everybody. He was the driver, dog. He was the There's, only you, character. If, if you that if you would have guessed if you would have guessed it that he had known Meriwether at, beforehand, you would have been a. You, uh, let me tell you, there was no way for you to re- Bro, to realize that until the end. You're talking to somebody who walks a sh- watches a shit ton of movies. Bro, you talk- I even took a, me I even too. Took a art history class. That has nothing to do with this. <laughs> what are you talking about? There's the, uh, history, there's man. no way there there was no way you could have guessed that and still bro, possibly would have been wrong. People knew that Bruce Willis was a ghost in the sixth sense because of the red wine. Because red wine means death. Yeah, bro, but this, this has nothing to something. do with that. Yes, it How? Was, it was the lich key. Bro, how? Okay. Because of his name, who his daddy yes. is? No, that's stupid. <laughs> yes, bro, that's yes. stupid. Everything, sounds- everything up until that point in that movie, everything up until that point so in that movie. So you were completely shocked. No, 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 he no. Was, he's he's I, gonna take the money. This I year. was no, I was, I was completely shocked to find out that he had knew the guy, that he knew the guy, he planned everything. He was the reason why everything was there, because remember when they the part where they were gonna when they supposedly were gonna kill him, that looked real. Like that was no, there was nothing That's in what the. Let the me, I'm gonna tell you. And this. then let me tell you when I seen that part when the cops jammed him up in the hotel room when they kidnapped him, that was the they messed up. If they wouldn't have did that scene, I wouldn't have known for sure. How? Let me tell you why the his bounce back and the fact that old boy let him go after all of that shit. That told me no, everything. No, he because he was supposed to. He was basically a double agent. They didn't. He was playing the double he agent. He went. It, he went. Spoke what to them, and then what happened? Plays and then what agent. happened? What happened? People do that shit all the time. Then he plays another double agent. He plays a double agent to the double agent, and then he plays a double agent to the double agent to the double agent. <laughs> Bro, I'll, no, look, I'm. I'm. I'm gonna I'm I'm tell you this. I'm gonna tell you. I you, was more you, shocked. I was hey. more shocked at Luke Cage getting Harlem's Paradise than I, and taking it than I was at the ending of Den uh, of Thieves. I was more shocked at Den of Thieves because I wasn't expecting none of that. I did. I, it, I wasn't expecting just, none of you, that. You're talking about you got to think, bro. In the grand scheme of things, most movies. Okay, prime example. This is why The Watchmen, and I've probably said this a million times on here, or maybe it's my first time. Mm-hmm. This is why The Watchmen is one of the best comic book, uh, I gotta graphic re- novels. I gotta really and sit down and watch that I've movie. Ever seen? <laughs> Spoiler alert: Nobody fucking wins except the countries, and they win by taking a major loss. I gotta rewatch and that all movie. All the good guys walk away from each other, and one good guy dies. That movie was so long, guy, I kept falling asleep. <laughs> bro, it was beautiful because it didn't work out. It worked, but at the cost of everything, and people just walked away. When you could you imagine Superman walking up to Doomsday and they beating each other up, and then they just drop their fist and walk away? Like, fuck mm-hmm. it. That's what happened in the Watchmen, but on a grander scale. Yeah, but and that's it was not beautiful. But that didn't happen in the. It was in predi- the It wasn't predictable. Is the point I'm trying to make? Yeah, well, there, and, and those, that. and that's why Hancock. Because I've said I said this last week. That's why Hancock was so great because it wasn't predictable. 
you didn't know what was about to happen. I had exactly no idea it was a damn angel. Hey, you you must be a movie god to have known that because they didn't sh- they showed it at the end. Nothing. And yeah. mo- and most of the time in movies like that, they never show shit. They and they, they don't show, show nothing. nothing. Now let me tell they you. They showed it at the end of Den of Thieves, now though. Let's go to Den of Thieves. They sh- if they did if they wouldn't have shown it, say they would have say they would have sh- ended it at the part where uh he disappears with the money, right? And then mm-hmm. instead of showing how everything actually played out, showed him in London with the crew that he had established with they everything. Would it would have been show. that would have been it. That would have been it. I would have had so many questions. And then, but guess what? They I would have had so many other questions. They could have just showed bed. him in London. Go to bed. Go to bed, mama. Go to they bed, They could have just showed him in London by himself, and that would have been enough to tell me he took the money. And it <clears> of course. Like, yeah. That's it. But, because, and then, but and then you wouldn't even have to show the whole crew. It, you didn't even, you wouldn't even have to give me egg, a background. I egg, did it. Exactly. Because what and happens, what? you didn't, you didn't remember, you didn't see that one of the trash cans was the guy on his soccer team or one of the trash guys was a friend of his on the soccer team. Cause you didn't they see him in the movie the until the, team. yeah, but you, the end. but they showed it at the end though. Listen, that was the only listen, thing they showed at the end. Bro, Cause the he wasn't a part, to, he wasn't a part bro, of the crew that was sitting at bro, the table when they first got in there. That's what I was trying, bro, to, let trying me, to say. Let me tell you though, I don't know about you. But I didn't need to. You didn't even have to have that connection for me to know that he was going to be the main driving force of the whole story. Mm, you did not. Have you to, didn't. I didn't see enough of him. Key. He was. It. He was such a major. He was the major driving force. The major connection. If he would have fell out of the movie, they wouldn't have been able to figure out anything. And all of a sudden, you cracking. Wait. What do you mean? All of a sudden, Bro, if it wasn't for him, they wouldn't have got all the specifics of everybody getting out of jail, of uh old boy well, getting out yeah, of jail. Why why though? He because of that up, picture. Bro. No, no, no. The picture. They seen him with the guy in the picture, and then that was the guy that they were already looking at. Cause remember how they found that guy was they they, they started thinking about all the robberies. And then they yeah. said they said, Mer- isn't Merriman out of jail? Yep. And then they started looking up. Then they found the picture with him. Then they started. Then they kidnapped they him, him up. and did but all of that stuff. But remember, them, but remember, he gave them the actual proof. He said, "I'm just driving for." Yeah, him. I'm just driving for. It. And then what happened? Then he says they they find out. He comes talk to them. Then they say, "All right, cool." They they do the whole "I'm about to kill you" bit. That don't go down. Then he says, "All right, cool." Tell them that everything's gonna happen on Friday. And then the guy goes to the strip club, takes home his girlfriend. His girlfriend is the one that tells him where it's going to be. And then, when he, remember, when he walks at the house, he walks into the bathroom and the girlfriend said, I did what you told me to do. So he, in a sense, was the main character of the movie. Not, it wasn't even 50 Cent. Merriman was the main character of the movie. So when he, you're following him, he was the main one on screen. Exactly, you're following him, and you're fo- member because the reason I'm everything up until that point, I'm calling it. I'm like, oh, there, remember when he was describing all of the money and how whenever they get the old cash in, it takes the numbers out of the system, so these money aren't accounted for. Then that money gets shredded, gets dropped into a dumpster, and then it's trash after that. So. I, Everything up until that point, I'm already calling it. I said they're gonna take the money, the the unaccounted for money. They're gonna get it up until the point of it being counted. Then they're gonna drop it into the trash cans. Cause remember, they sh- he she talked about the whole process of how it goes. But you wouldn't have known. He, you wouldn't have known he got the he got that through him, or you wouldn't have known where he had got that from unless the ending didn't show it to you. So that's why I'm saying it was such a it was such a mind blown that actually that O'Shea was the one that was setting it all up because even even throughout the movie, remember, he already knew the ventilation systems, but they got him actually looking at the papers as he's crawling through the ventilation system and doing all of this stuff. So either they just had it like yo, we just gonna throw a curveball at the end or whatever. But I just didn't know all of them small details, and this is why I was telling my wife, I was telling her. It, it sucks for me when I watch movies because I'm always trying to predict the ending. So I'm always sitting here trying to predict what's happening next. And I even, man, I swear if you ask her, I was like, oh, this is what they're going to do. And they did it. And I'm like, oh, this is what, see, I knew they were going to do it. And then the trash can scene happened. 
And then remember, it wasn't the, it was the the guy that he was cool with at the bar. Well, you didn't you didn't even know that towards the end until the end as well. The guy he was cool with switches places with that driver. Remember, they they make the call. The guy makes the call after he tells him, hey, he's been kidnapped or whatever, or Silverback is gone or however the call was, whatever. And, and then he, he got out. kidnapped. Yeah, he was freaking out about it. So if you if he remember and remember he was like fuck. Like, he really got caught. Like, he really, <laughs> like, something really was about to happen. The the uh, the uh bigger, I think he was, like, Hawaiian or whatever, the bigger dude. The big heavy set dude, yeah. Actually, that guy, that big from dude the Walking Dead. from The Walking Dead. So, I was, so, all of those parts, I'm sitting there, you, you, you're remembering these small details, and then out of nowhere, oh, him and Merriman were friends. He brought the idea to marry me. This, that, and the third. This is why it was such. This is why I enjoyed the movie so much. And I didn't think it was that. I didn't think it was. I didn't think it. Its predictability got thrown out the window for me. But it was because of the twist. So yeah, you you probably were able to predict the movie up until that point. But all, everything else, you could have. That's like a one percent guess in the world. <laughs> well, this, but but the minor details weren't enough to carry the movie for me. I enjoyed the movie. Yeah. I'm going to tell you what truly shocked me was uh, 50 Cent and dying. Uh, dying. Yeah. And the way he died, that shocked me more than everything else. Yeah. We're going to spoiler alert the shit out of this episode. So, yeah, it's super spoilers. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, the way 50 Cent dying and Merriman dying and only one of the random cops dying. Mm-hmm. That was a bigger shock to me. You know what would have been a better twist, even though I would have I was expecting it. I thought it was gonna be they were um the cops were gonna be doing the robbing and the guys Ooh. who were considered the thieves were for, gonna be like DEA or something. You, I'm talking from I, the trailer, right? Because uh, I no, not even I think I thought I think that from the trailer. I thought that I because from the trailer, I was hoping obviously the movie is called Den of Thieves, right? And then you you from the trailer you knew that it was cops and robbers, but sure. I thought it was cops or robbers versus cops that are robbers. You know what? There was a That's movie what I that was like that. Yeah, um, I want to say it was called Nine Something. Mm-hmm. Um, it's on Netflix. Uh, I'll find the title of it. Yeah. Um, and that's literally what the story was: cops robbing and trying to clear cops robbing robbers yeah um which i I mean hell that would have been a lot you know yeah i don't know maybe i wasn't disappointed i think i just my expectations were too high Mm -hmm. i i i I, I just i with that movie it like i said when i'm sitting down watching a movie I, I always mess myself up because I'm always predicting. I'm always trying to predict the ending. And nine times out of ten, I'm right. Because it's most of these movies today are predictable. Um, but not only that, it's I'm paying attention. I force I have to force myself to pay attention to every detail. Because even even I'm saying like, oh, remember when he was talking about the robbery from 2005 and they, they had to use the sewer system? I was like, they're going to use it. In this, my wife was like, "When did they say that?" <laughs> so I'm these small minor details in any movie. I pay attention to it and I force myself to remember it because I'm always trying to predict the ending. So that's why it was a major twist to me when they show, "Oh, they were actually friends." Oh, this he knew that this was gonna be the crew. Like the and I guess because I follow Fifty Cent on social media, different stuff. I thought Fifty Cent would have had a way bigger role. Like we was we was in his house. We get to see his kids and his wife. Yeah, <laughs> that was it. The way, the way they introduced and treated a lot of characters was very strange. Yeah, they and maybe that was the point. Like people you thought were major characters actually were not. Were not. Not even in the trailer, but like the movie. Yeah. Like like you said, Fifty Cent seeing his whole family. Enter that scene, you know, but then it makes you think did they just do that stuff as filler to add, you, um, you know what I mean? I, I, would, I, would, I would agree to that. So now the question is, was it poor writing with great action scenes? Mm. Ooh. That's a tough one. I, I, I mean, now that I say that and really thinking about it, I think the movie was poor writing with great action scenes. Yeah, because 
Yeah, I, I guess so. There was a lot of major points that did not get driven home at y- all. Yeah, because I'm just saying, like, they had they had the, uh, the in the, well, you know, you did get to hear about one of the guys, um, the guy that worked for DWP. Uh-huh. Um, that he how he worked for DWP. He was in the mil- the mil- the military. Uh, that how and you knew all of these guys were in the military. Uh, based off of what the, the when the cops were sitting at the board the first time they were in the office sitting at the board talking about how, oh yeah they when he when he basically pointed out that they don't kill regular people they only kill cops they only kill suits mm-hmm. so anybody with a badge is getting killed if they have to kill you. Uh, when they robbed the armored truck. Yeah, yeah. So, like, everything up until those points are mad predictable. Hey, but even even with that, that was super cheesy. They robbed an empty, uh, an empty, uh, an empty armored car. Yeah. Here it is. You got somebody who just went to jail who who's already a suspect. As mm-hmm. soon as he was out of jail, he's immediately with a suspect. suspect. And now, all of a sudden, the armored car empty goes missing. Mm-hmm. They rob him, but they but see immediately once they found out an empty armored truck went missing, they immediately knew who to look to. Yeah. So they didn't Merriman just get out of jail or whatever. What they, it was super <laughs> weird. It, like not like once again, I think it was just a couple of plot points that were missed. Yeah. Or they could have hit just a little bit better. But I don't write movies, so who am I to say? I, <laughs> we I we still it, we still I, went and watched I it. Still watched it, and I enjoyed it. Yeah. I'm not even gonna sit here and you know I'm just trying to be critical about it. No, and I and I I get I get the I get the critical point about it. I just whenever you throw me off like that, and it's and especially how small it was. That was like a minute twenty seconds of being thrown off. The whole movie was like an hour or something long. So to be thrown off, like to be shaking it up at the end like that, and then it just ends. It ends on the note of... Sounds cheap. Yeah, it ends on the note of it's going to happen again. Well, yeah, because he was at another bar that was across from another... The dude, ha- the dude had an English accent. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> he had an English yeah. accent. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> Uh, come on, he he's from come England. On, man. Come on, man. <laughs> so that really that was but, the uh, the point right but there. I'm a I'm a tell you, if they wouldn't have did that, the cops wouldn't have kidnapped him and punked him out like mm-hmm. that, and then he immediately got punked out again by his crew, and he still was alive. But that see, this is why this is that's what, what let me know. I was you, like, oh. you know what? I was I was cool with that because this was like he was like the guy. I'm expecting him to be the main character now because he's playing this double agent. When we need information from you, we're coming to you. And then what he say when he when he second time he seen him? Don't worry, they're not going to kill you because they got so much heat on their back now. They understand if we kill you, we know who to go to. We just seen y'all having dinner. You just considered him family. We know who to look to now. We know who to put surveillance on and all this type of yeah. shit. This, this is exactly what I explained to my wife. So I was, uh, so I was like, okay, but then it got shaken up again when he was like, "Cool, tell him it's happening on Friday." Instantly, when he said that, I looked at my wife and I said, "They're gonna do it on Friday, but they're gonna like send them somewhere far the hell off," which they did. Sent them far the way off, whatever. He and he knew what was gonna happen. Remember, he was playing both of them because he knew what was going to happen. And he, t- he just told him, I don't know what. I'm just the driver. And then what happens? It happens the way it happens. We predict all of that shit to happen. And then they find out exactly where they were going to be at. But that, that whole movie and plot point to me would have been way better if they would have put a no name actor in that position. Mm hmm. <laughs> <laughs> because you got that's just like. Dude, that's just like okay. Infinity War has been out how long now? Months, uh, couple months since May. I it believe. has been out since April. Yeah, it came out like yeah. end of or, April. No, it came out April. Yeah, you're right. Um. So okay. So spoiler alert. How do you imagine how heart wrenching that last scene of that movie would have been if we didn't know about contracts? If we didn't know they were already shooting movies, mm-hmm. part three of movies. Yeah. And if so and so wasn't already signed on to do, imagine how intense. Could you imagine if that scene would have, and we talked about this on Urban Retcon. Imagine how intense that would have been 20 years ago. 
It would have been mad intense. It's, Bro, you're talking about if you were like a kid. Because as a kid, no, you're not paying not, attention to that as well. Because that make, it would no, make no, the no, same no, sense. No, 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 no. Well, yeah, cause ki- unless your kid's like social media savvy. Exactly. But I'm talking about in a world where we don't have... We don't have access to everybody's contract, how many movies they're signed on for. Yeah. But that's not common knowledge. Like, that's not the most common thing we know about. Because people didn't know every little thing about actors. I'm going I'm, I'm to say that that's different from O'Shea in... Uh, because you're saying he can never play a punk in a movie? I'm saying not for his second big movie. Why not? No. No, it's his. Look, it's only his second big movie. Look, look how long it took most Dev to play somebody with a handicap. I mean, has he ever been offered to play a handicap? Yeah, he did. He played somebody. He was. He was mentally, I guess, disabled. Y- yeah, but slow. before but before then, has he ever played? He played in a lot of movies, bro. Yeah, he I know that. Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. I I know that. What I'm saying is. Before that movie that he played the handicap in, has he ever been offered to play another? So I, what I'm that's what I'm saying. I I'm I'm not putting nothing past O'Shea playing any type of character. I, I mean, am. think about think about how many people go outside you know, their realm and play and play a, a character you would have never thought they would have played. Do something that they would have never started to do. Yeah, work for everybody. Well, O'Shea, you act like O'Shea is like the best of the best. <laughs> no, no, and that's the point. He's not the best of the best. So him playing any role in any movie is okay. Uh, it's only his second bro. role, and it wasn't even a blockbuster. Uh, uh I, I think it did okay. It did okay, but no blockbuster. But it I'm wasn't no you, Boys in the Hood. I'm gonna tell you. They would have did way better to put a no name, no recognized. But you ain't going to go see it. In that position. Ah, so was he the selling point of the movie? I'm pretty sure he was. Well, I'm pretty sure 50 Cent was. Well, you had 50 Cent. You had old boy from uh, 300. 300. You had, and I think they're bigger than him. They are. Way yeah. He's, he's, he's relevant now. And the rest of them were relevant then. Then. Do you get what I'm saying? Now, okay. So you making my plot points for me. No, I'm not. It's the, yes, I just think he are. can play with a 50 Cent played. 50 Cent lost a gang of weight to play a, a dying dude. And how did that movie do? That movie did great. I, you did, So you're saying you didn't enjoy the movie? Well, I don't even I think know what it's went, I think it was. I think it went straight to Netflix, but I enjoyed the movie. Uh, Okay, but listen. You're to talking about doing saying. like in nu- on numbers. If it went no, straight to I'm, Netflix, did you no, enjoy the movie? Was the movie good? I only heard good things see, about the bro. movie, bro. But think about. I it. only heard good things guess, about the movie. It probably won awards. Most movies that win a bunch of fucking awards are trash. I don't know. But look, you bro. thought Crash was trash? No, trash. Uh, okay, trash, then. Trash, that won a gang of movie, a gang of awards. I'm just being petty yeah, right now. You are being petty. I'm being real petty right now. Hey, next thing you're gonna say the sound of uh you know so, <laughs> what's that I, story? I just what I what I just don't I don't put nothing past any actor to do anything. I mean people go outside their realm every day, B. We got men in dresses. Well that's fine. But it just nah. Uh I just I, I just I, oh I, shit as as oh I, shit. See, this is the difference. Oh sh- when Ice Cube's in the movie, you know he's gangster. <laughs> Twenty. He's typecasted as that. He's the gun ho, tooting, shooting. You know he gonna get the job done with a little bit of co- uh, com- uh, comedic relief. O'Shea, we haven't seen nothing from him to solidify him as an actor to not be no actor to be punked or not be no actor to play something outside of his role. I mean, we're comparing him to Ice Cube. We can't I'm, do that just no, yet. He only been no, in two movies. No, let me tell you. I'm not comparing him to Ice Cube. I'm saying that the clout of Ice Cube and the fact that his first major role was one of the biggest movies to come out in the past 10 years mm-hmm. is the point I'm making. Yeah, but that don't say nothing. We still don't know what type of actor he is. But what I'm telling you is... Based off of I'm everything not. you just say, we still don't know. Oh, we don't he know. Come out and, he come out and play a... Play a sensitive ass dude in some random movie, you're gonna have to take all that if back. We a, still it, no, don't know. Listen, listen, if it's a romantic comedy, I'm all for it. 
You got to think about the theme of the movie. I'm just saying. Oh, look, I'm what I'm telling you is you got to think about the theme of the movie. The theme of the movie is cops and robbers. Lying, tricking, thieving, blah, 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 mm-hmm. blah, blah, blah. Criminal activity on both ends. Blah, 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 blah. You got semi-dirty cops, semi-nice criminals. And then all of a sudden, you got a random driver who happens to be O'Shea. Get the fuck out! Man, who can't? I just don't. You you can't you can't say all of that based off of two roles in his name. Bro. He's a total different actor when it comes to that. Bro. When you when oh when no, no, when I'm Ice Cube you no, 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 no. yeah even the realm of Ice Cube even the realm of Ice Cube in Bro, name I one movie something name one movie Ice Cube was in other than well yeah. did he have a gun in uh Friday next. He had one he in Friday. And are we there yet? You, okay, let me and let me not say let me not say the gun. Let me not say a gun. He wasn't thugging. He was. Are we there yet? He was thugging. Are we, the way even his demeanor, the way it's Ice Cube. Yeah, true. O'Shea is not ha, does not have that clout yet. He does not have, have none of that. You don't have to, bro. So you're saying you you just that said that. that you just said he listen, has the listen, aura around listen, him. Listen, he doesn't have to. His dad has it. So for you to say that his who his dad is doesn't mean anything. That's what you're trying to say. It doesn't mean anything. That's why okay. he could play a punk in the movie. He okay. could play anything in the movie <laughs> because we don't know okay. him as if an that's actor the yet. Base of what you believe, I can't argue with you about it. Okay. That's your opinion, and as simple as that. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, you can't tell me you didn't know he was about to be the main. No, I did not. <laughs> I did not. I'm All telling right. you I did not. Okay. Well, so lately, now piggybacking on to something else. So I'm I'm starting to realize that I'm a bit of a caveman. Um, I mean, I have an old phone. I, uh, if I mash it, the buttons when I type. Um, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Right? Well... I read books and um, I thought physical books were the only way and audio books were like cheating. Mm -hmm. But I found out that through my Amazon prime that I have this thing called prime reading, which gives me Kindle on my, which I download Kindle on my phone and link my Amazon prime account. And I have access to like a thousand free books, including like comics and whatnot. Yeah. But what makes it more epic on top of that is those books that I have come with audio books. So it'll be the audio book to the book that I'm reading. Yeah. And it's completely changed my mind. I'm about audio books? I'm burning through books like crazy. Like I just read uh, James Baldwin's uh, The Last Fire or The Fire That'll Come or something like that. Mm -hmm. Um, Damn, it is hot in my house. Yeah, it's hot, period, bro. I'm over here sweating, thinking cool thoughts. Yeah. I will think no hot thoughts. It's all cool thoughts from here on Why out. Because it's so hot. Look at my Guam face. Dad wouldn't have it any other way. <laughs> um, But audiobooks, bro, has completely changed the game for me. It's it's but shocking it, to hear you say that. Yeah. Oh, because you know me. I'm a traditionalist when it comes to reading. Yeah. Um, he was I like, still, "You're you're cheating." <laughs> yeah, like I feel like I'm cheating. Like I really, I feel like I'm cheating. But what's dope is I love it for books that are hard for me to get through. Mm-hmm. Um, because hearing somebody say it and having it read to you, um, different. You, all I got to do is sit here and pull it apart and not read it, pull it apart, put it back in my own words. Try to, you know, like I can't. I, I'm already on my. Well, I'm on my second book, and I've only had it for like two days. Mm-hmm. But the thing that makes me so embarrassed about it is how long it takes me to read books just because I take my time and put them down. I'll read 10 pages here, 20 pages there, yeah, 30 pages here. Well, it puts an hour limit because it's basically just audio track and it puts how long it is. The book is. Yeah. So here it is. Books that would take me like damn near weeks to read. <laughs> They're only like 11 hours. 11 hours. Yeah. Yeah. I, I so, think, well, Ready Player One was three hours. See that's that's bullshit. <laughs> it took me like two days. It took it took me. Well, this, but you know what? I read on my breaks at work, mm-hmm. so it's not like I'm sitting at home knocking them out in here reading. You yeah. know, even though I should be, but if I'm in here, I'm trying to make a video or something. But see, we, and we've had this conversation. I think we had it all. I don't know if we had it on 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 uh, on the podcast. Mm-hmm. Reading 
in today's day and age, you you it's especially like when you get off work and stuff like that. Unless you're going straight to bed, especially for people in the in this realm, it's hard to not sit in front of your computer. Whether you're sitting wow. in front of your reading, watching memes, or watching what's new in the world or whatever, um, or playing a game, streaming stuff like that. It's hard to find time to sit down and open up a book, especially when you ain't got it. You drive an hour to work, you drive an hour home, right? You spend about, let's say, six hours sleeping, right? You got to work eight hours of working, right? You may get an hour off for break. You got to eat 30 minutes for break. So you got like 30 yep. minutes to squeeze in some reading time. Yep. You see what I'm saying? So now you're now you're really micromanaging your life just to get some reading in. Whereas then, if you okay. weren't doing none of this, you could work. Come home, get off work, chill with the fam for an hour or two, get like three hours, four hours of reading in, and then go to sleep. Oh, I know. You, like, you, I think that's something I'm going to implement, uh, like 20 minutes of just like decompressing, whether it's reading or doing some yoga or meditating or something. Yeah. I don't fucking know. But I'm, I got to have that time to decompress. And that's and that's normally when I read or like be outside watering the grass like a weirdo because I get home late mm -hmm. and it'll be like ten o'clock like now and I'll be outside watering the grass. You might as well just that. keep a headphone in your ear at all. Time. Yeah, hey, no, and that and that's actually and that's the point I'm making when it comes to the audio book. Yeah, um, I can do my job and listen to the audio book, but I have to have both headphones in. I can't listen to nothing else. Mm -hmm. I, I can do my job and listen to audiobook and manage it. But as soon as I take one earbud out, as soon as I look at a picture or something, I'm, noise. I'm not, I'm not, it's nothing. Yeah. It's, yeah. Real quick. And I have to go back and I'll go back to the page that I last could, you know, remember and come mm -hmm. in. And then start from there again. Yeah. And then I start from there and play it. And um, I love it though. I didn't think I would like it as much as I do. Yeah. And what's cool is like right now I'm reading this book called The Woodcutter. Um, I just and then clearly I just finished before that um uh, a book by James Baldwin. Um You should learn I another said, language. I should, huh? Get another I no. I actually got because I have audio audio uh audible. Audible? Audible? Audible. Oh, audible. Yeah, that's audible. It, audible. And um I had three free credits, so I went and got uh, three. I get three free credits. I didn't use them. I wasn't using them. Oh, okay. so I, I got fight. <laughs> three free credits. It was uh, downloading. Um, I downloaded a whole three part session of like how to learn Spanish. Ooh! So I was playing it in the house, and me and my daughter were sitting there and repeating them back and forth, back and forth. And then I listened to it when I drive. So that's smart. The bad part about audio audio book or audio or audio books. Audible. Oh, audio books. Okay. Audio books is the time where I spend to listen to music takes over. So I got to cut it in half. So like on my way to work, I'll listen to music on my way home. I'll listen to the book, stuff like that. I've been what I what I used to do was I used to whenever I got home, I literally I got home and it'll be listening to a book or listening to music straight. And then gotcha. when I wake up in the morning and I'm getting stuff done around the house, I'd listen to a book. I make sure that it was a book playing. And then from there, I'll start my day outside of being at home. So oh, it, it's the bad part about it is that you really have to like remind yourself like with personal reminders i have like reminders in my phone that'll go off and it'll have like the note telling me what i need to do and then you know i just go from there but even at work sometimes i'll be walking around with one of my because i have wireless earbuds for my phone i would just put them put the earbud in my ear and then be listening to a book it's it's cool what i would i, would, I think now i prefer audiobooks Cause at first I used to say the same thing. I'd rather read it. I'd rather have the book. But what I like to do is I like to listen to the audio audio book and then buy the physical book. And then mm -hmm. so even sometimes when, cause normally when I write a book or read a book, I like write down key points in the book yeah, yeah, yeah. and make note of it. And then 
I'll be able to go back because I'll write down like the page number and stuff like that. This is how this is like references, especially when we talked about Ready Player One. That's how I was able to remember certain the certain parts in there because yeah, it's a lot to grasp, especially when somebody's reading it to you. But yeah, man, you're you're gonna be open to a whole new world, yeah, and you're gonna man. be getting books done like this to the point where you probably won't even remember some of them. And that and that's something that threw me off. Like, uh, and then what was a trip was. Because you know I work eight to ten hour days, mm-hmm. so what what tripped me out with um, the Bald the Baldwin book I read it was only or I listened to it was only like two and a half hours of reading. Yeah, so I was able to listen to it twice to really grasp what I heard. I was yeah. like, okay, and then I mean even even the book I'm reading now I want to say it's only seven hours. Mm-hmm. That's. I, in two days, if I really, from beginning to end, I could listen to it two work days. You, you know what I was doing? I was shutting the power off to call, call of duty. Or not not the power, the, the audio off mm. like from the game. And then playing, uh, playing music. Because sometimes when I'm playing certain games, I can't listen to the What's music. I can't pay attention to the music because I'm playing the game. But games like Call of Duty, I want to, and I want to try it for State of Decay. Games, because it's a lot. Of, I have subtitles on, so it's a lot of reading in there. True. Games like State of Decay, it's and it's minor reading anyway. Yeah. You only need keywords. So True. try like try like cutting Zombie the audio enemy. off. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. And then you look on the map, you know exactly where to go. Yeah. But um, try like shutting the audio off for a game. Like a game like that, because you can't do that with certain games, certain games where you need the audio, a game like that, and then just listening to a book and playing a game. That way you are doing two things at one time. It may not, you may not, some people may not want to do that, but how many times, remember Xbox was, that was a feature on Xbox 360. That was the best. You put the music on the, you could plug your iPod up, play the music off your iPod and play the game and the audio was perfect. That was the best. Uh, Remember games? That was a big feature for games, period, during mm-hmm. that time frame. Especially car games and like Grand Theft Auto. And whatnot. Yeah. If your game didn't have the ability for me to link my MP3s to. It sucked. It was trash. <laughs> it sucked. Like, if I can't create my own playlist within your game, but your game but is you, garbage. You know what's funny, though? You know what I used to do on PlayStation 3 and PlayStation 2? PlayStation 3, remember, it, it had the HDMI port, but uh-huh. it also had the, the the green, the green, blue, and all of them super cables. Yeah. I used to call them the super cables. I used to unplug the audio, and I had an audio, a, a red and white uh, cable for the, the, the TV, and then it had the 3.5 millimeter jack, and I would stick it into the ah. my iPod. And I'm able to play the game and just listen to the music. I don't have to worry about the audio for the game. But that's why I love those cables. I actually still have those cables. I just found those. So playing music that way was perfect. I could play the game. I could play whatever. I used to play uh, Gran Turismo like that. I got Play Gran Turismo and then be playing and then be listening to whatever music I had on my iPod at that time. So, yeah, you were right. And... Obviously, PlayStation 3 didn't have that feature, but Xbox 360 did, and I didn't have it. Well, we had one, but it, it was it was sitting down, getting dusty. Yeah. yeah but, but yeah, doing most, especially with audiobooks, you're going to be doing the most. And it just, it just fits with, it fits with today's, like, I need to let go, because um, mm-hmm. I know for me, a lot of things are, um, books are never going to go away. Uh, People thought, you know, because if books go away, you might as well go ahead and say, like, it's just, it's Wait, one of those. You cut off, say that, say that again. Oh, like books are not gonna go away, just like movie theaters aren't gonna go away. Yeah, okay. it's it's just it's one of those pastimes, and it's one of the few things that links everybody together. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm thinking about picking up a Gary V one, that his newest book, because I do have a credit I got to use. Yeah, you better and you know buy what's that. the cool. Um, yeah, you know what's dope about the credits too? They were saying that you get to exchange the books at any time. Like if you didn't like it. Oh really? And yeah, no I, questions asked. Like, I just been stacking it. up that library. I, I I probably got like two more credits now, but I didn't um I like, was gonna catch book 
Go I was ahead. gonna cancel my audio, my audio, my audible, blah, 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 however you say audible. Mm-hmm. I was gonna cancel it, and um, I thought I canceled it, but I didn't. So I'm seeing this random transaction. Checking it was like my fourteen state. bucks. Like, no, yeah. it's like I think it was like four ninety nine. So I I got like the cheap one, the the cheapest. Yeah, yeah, one. yeah. So I'm like, what the heck is this? It says Amazon, and I'm like, yo. So I call Amazon, like, yo, y'all taking money out my account. For, and I don't know what it is because it just says Amazon and it says like VSE or some shit. Yeah. I'm like, what the heck is this? And they were like, okay, well, you know, you have this, you have this, then you have audio, auto, audio, auto, audio, audible, audible, whatever, or audio, audible, yeah. And uh, he goes, <laughs> he goes, he was like, yeah, you have a uh, audio, audible. That's all you have. I'm like, I thought I canceled that. And he was like, nah, and you got three credits. Or like at the time it was like three or four credits. I'm like, all right, you know, I'll just keep it then. Never mind. And got the phone with him and went and bought those three books. I bought a gang of books off there. But, you know, not only that is you can find free books online yep. and download just the audio. And there's just free books online. Just yep. type in free books and you can find free books, download them. It'll give it to you in an MP3 track. And you just listen to the book like that. Hey, and you know it's a trip, man, and that's why I'm happy because I'm starting to really maximize my Amazon Prime because mm-hmm. I always used it, it used it, it, it. Used I it, always it. used the hell out of it um, for like ordering stuff and getting yeah. two day shipping and discount. I've been using that for years since like 2008, 2009. Mm-hmm. Um, but now I actually like I'm benefiting from the Prime Pictures, Prime Photos, Prime Music, Prime Reading. Prime, blah 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 blah. Yeah. Like I'm starting to really maximize my use of it, and um, I think that's my last little call to action before we get off. Yeah. Just starting to hit that mark. Damn, um, it is if you we segued the shit out of Luke Cage. Yeah, we did. <laughs> but anyway, we... all uh, well, my last thoughts on Luke Cage is that uh, um, that it I did enjoy the full season straight through. And then just my speculations at the end is whatever we had that conversation about. But yeah. and my last thoughts on Luke Cage before we go, because we clearly don't not stay on track. <laughs> we sure don't. Um, my thoughts on Luke Cage. I was pleasantly surprised. Mm-hmm. Good villain, hell of a story and plot lines for every character, and even the ending seeing the villain who we thought was the main villain throughout the show in Bushmaster becoming almost a brother and a friend to Luke Cage. So where does this season stand out of all the Marvel Netflix? Uh, where does this season stand? I would put least? this behind season. Uh, I put this behind season one of Punisher. So it would go season one, Daredevil season one, Parrot Punisher and then this, and then season. Uh, oh two yeah, ours one. was way off because I had Punisher as my number one, mm-hmm. and then ours I had I had Daredevil season two as my second, and then Daredevil season one as my third. Mm-hmm. So I think mm-hmm. I think this, I think this season of Luke Cage goes would probably go right after season two. So third, third on my list out of all the Marvel, this is third on my list right after Daredevil season two. Right in between. I mean, this is third. This is third on my list. Oh, too. it is. Okay, cool. And the only reason that it it solidified the third spot because there were Jamaican villains. You stupid. <laughs> I think I think it was just the character growth. Yeah. Um, that that was a uh, and then seeing the good guy. I like watching good guys lose because we already know how it's gonna end. Mm-hmm. Usually, you're the good guy. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You're not gonna uh, die. You're not, and your name's on the show. Yeah. Like. <laughs> Well, since you want to get all technical, mine is going to be uh, the the true villain playing, fighting a battle on two fronts. Uh, that, that, was I, that That's very important. I, I thought that was very dope because it's easy when you see a villain have to fight one person. Just the good guy. Yeah. yeah. And then the good guy is always on the back foot because they're waiting. Yeah. You know, in this but one. She couldn't even rest. She couldn't do nothing. She couldn't breathe properly without another situation happening. And then another one, and then another one, and then another one. So, I was cool with I was cool with that. I think that that kind of that put it in a different perspective with me because 
I wasn't expecting that off the rip. And then the way they introduced the second people that were the first front people, which was which in this case were the Yardies. Um Stylers. Yeah, it was pretty pretty dope. So yeah, that that's that's where Luke Cage stands with me. I thought it was dope. Um and then was shaky for me, but I liked it all together. Well, on that note, folks, before we jump to a new topic, a tailspin. Ooh, another topic? Make sure, no. Make sure another to topic. Come on, man. Make sure to subscribe. Make, and then if you're listening to us on any other of the of the services, iHeart, iTunes, Speaker. wherever you're listening to us out, make sure to hit the follow and subscribe button. Mm-hmm. And then make sure to follow, um, make sure to subscribe to our personal YouTube pages. Baron J67, wow. Silent XT Jones. Hey man, it's T Jones, dog. Don't put in just. A... Dang man, my is name is T Jones, Jones. Though. What are you talking? Oh, you talking about for my my plugs? Oh, you plugging yeah. the? Oh, oh you God. plugging the dog? Yeah, it's XT Jones. Because <laughs> T Jones was taking. You know, sometimes I've I I, I, I actually no no no. Literally, I seen some shit fly by this. I thought it was my dog. But I don't see it no more, so I was, <laughs> was sitting there looking, like what happened. I was trying to pay attention to it, but uh, yeah, thanks for the plug. I appreciate that. Um, yes, it is at XT Jones on everything. Everything is in the description below. Yes, you know if if it and this is on. Well, right now we're we're all over the place. Just all over. You can find just us. Google us. Just Google, Google us. us. Adventures of the Black Nerds, and we out. Peace. Peace.